Graham Grahams. Item number, SCP-1911. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Newly discovered instances of SCP-1911 are to be immediately reported to the supervising director. If at all possible, recording equipment should be set up in the domicile currently occupied by SCP-1911, and the following supplies are to be made available to SCP-1911. Paper towels of any brand. Cleaning products, including bleach, ammonia, glass cleaner, vacuum bags, laundry detergent, and dish soap. Supplies for knitting, quilting, sewing, or basket weaving. Adult diapers in the current target size. The target of SCP-1911 is to be kept alive and restrained by all possible means. If SCP-1911's target escapes, it is to be returned to the residence and restrained. If SCP-1911's target expires, Observers of SCP-1911 are to be returned to Site-54 for reassignment, and the occupied domicile is to be scrapped or repurposed. Description: SCP-1911 is an entity taking the form of one to approximately 30 elderly females, which are referred to in reports by numerical designation, all of whom identify as Grandma, Gramgram, Nanny, Grammers, etc. SCP-1911 targets single human males living alone, then attempts to entice them into allowing them access into their domicile. If SCP-1911 is denied access, more and more instances of the entity begin to appear, attempting to access different points in the home. Door, windows, garage or storm doors, chimneys, etc. If SCP-1911 is continually denied access, it will attempt to force its way into the domicile. This rarely succeeds, as in spite of numbers, instances of SCP-1911 have no more physical strength than an elderly human female. After failing to force its way into the home, SCP-1911 will dissipate. Usually, a plate of cookies, cakes, or sweets will be left on the doorstep with a handwritten note expressing condolences at not having been able to spend time with my grandson. The target is never mentioned by name. In the event that SCP-1911 gains admittance to a residence, one instance of SCP-1911 immediately begins to communicate with the target, asking about a variety of subjects. It is currently believed that SCP-1911 uses a form of cold reading to determine information about the subject then begins to expand the conversation. Usual topics include the target's parents, job, studies, or a significant other. Other non-conversational instances of SCP-1911 proceed to clean the residence. In all cases, the personal effects of the occupant are arranged, categorized in some logical form, and clean. Careful inspection reveals a complete lack of fingerprints hair follicles, dander, or any other evidence of human occupancy. SCP-1911 instances will cook for the target, knit or crochet articles of clothing for them, and, if necessary, feed them. In all instances, SCP-1911 continues to occupy the residence until the target expires or leaves for an extended period of time, at which point, Instances of SCP-1911 express confusion at why the target would leave or stop talking to them. Instances of SCP-1911 wander away and dissipate over a period of 1-7 to seven hours, after growing increasingly angry, bitter, and resentful at the lack of communication, leaving walkers, wheelchairs, canes, medical equipment, notably oxygen tanks and hearing aids, and purses. A full list of currently recovered items, collectively stored at Site-54, is available upon request. Previous Infestations SCP-1911 first came to Foundation attention in 1951. Since then, at least 14 infestations have been discovered, mostly after the infestation has dissipated. 
four successful containments have been established. Listed below are previously recorded contaminants, which were successfully established. Location Dunlap, Virginia Number manifested 5 Documentation Target expressed confusion over the presence of SCP-1911, though he eventually admitted the instances. After phoning the local police about possible dementia patients having wandered away from their caregivers, Foundation operatives moved in and restrained the target. Target attempted to escape seven times, two of which were successful and resulted in additional restraints being placed on the subject. Lobotomy was suggested and carried out with approval. Target died due to choking in 1959. Location Oxford, Mississippi Number manifested 1. Documentation SCP-1911 manifestation was reportedly extremely similar to the target's grandmother, who had recently passed away. Target admitted SCP-1911 immediately and willingly stayed and talked to the instance, leaving for short periods to buy more necessities. Target continued to contain SCP-1911 unknowingly until his death in an automobile incident in 1964. SCP-1911 was reportedly present at the target's funeral, though no one acknowledged any resemblance. Location Presidio, Texas Number manifested 29 Documentation Target managed to maintain his distance through the use of personal weaponry, killing seven manifestations. At some point, the target slipped off his roof, falling and breaking his leg, at which point he was overcome. SCP-1911 instances then relocated the target to the inside of the domicile and proceeded to care for him while he recovered. Foundation personnel managed to locate the target shortly after food supplies ran out, and after restraining him, SCP-1911 containment was considered active. Subject expired in 1989 from sepsis due to bed sores which SCP-1911 failed to detect. Current Containment Location the current target of SCP-1911 is John Cheever, born 1973, currently residing in Romney, West Virginia. Mr. Cheever's family is under the impression that the house was sold in 1992, and that Mr. Cheever severed all ties with them. Currently, the continued exposure to SCP-1911 has produced a Stockholm Syndrome effect, and Mr. Cheever believes that all instances of SCP-1911 are, in fact, his grandmother's. Current research is continuing on reproducing this effect, as means to lower escape rates at future instances. Addendum SCP-1911-T Recent audio reports from the current containment location of SCP-1911 were recently analyzed in a study by Dr. Blank, who reported that SCP-1911 often talked about the current target's cousins. Research revealed that none of these cousins existed. However, when compared to information from previous contaminants, several analogous instances were noted. The following is the originally discovered excerpt. 12th of January, 1999. 1443. Did I tell you about your cousin Maury? No, Grams. How is he? Well, let me tell you. You know he broke his leg? Did he, Grams? He did! And you know that Grandma was there to take care of him, of course. And he was so angry and upset. Oh, heavens, he was upset. Well, you know how he is. Oh, I most certainly do. He was fighting and yelling and screaming fit to be tied. Why did he do that, Grams? Oh, you know him. Just ornery and hateful. Always has been. Can't help but to lash out at people. I'm sorry, Grams. What happened? Well, he got sick and died, honey. Not then, but later. I was so sad to see him go. Currently, this information is being used to search for undiscovered infestations of SCP-1911. Any notable similarities between these and real-life events should be immediately reported to the supervising director. Possibly previously unknown infestations. 17th of September, 1997, 1918. 
Did you know that your cousin Tony is in college now? He's gonna be a doctor. Well, Grandma could be prouder of him. He worked so hard. I wish he'd call. You know, I went to see him again, and he wouldn't even answer the door. 29th of October, 2001, 0 Oh, you know how hate it was. Always looking for a quick buck. Well, Grandma helped him out, and he never even said thank you. Well, he came back, and Grandma asked him what he'd been doing, and do you know what he was doing? He'd been out drinking. Well, Grandma wasn't going to have any of that, so she just went ahead and gave him some of her medicine to calm him down. Do you know he made such a mess of his bed? He used the bathroom in it, and, oh, Grandma couldn't even get him to wake up. I guess he was just too drunk still. I finally had enough and just left, but goodness... What a rude boy. I blame poor parenting. 7th of July, 2002, 0936. Oh, I felt so foolish. But I went to visit Roddy. You remember Roddy? When I went to visit Roddy, I went to make him some tea, and then he started screaming and crying so loudly all of a sudden. Well, Grandma went up to check on him, and he was so upset and angry. Well, Grandma forgot about the kettle land. One thing led to another, and Roddy just went ahead and made me leave, and wouldn't you know it, his house caught fire. Oh, Grandma felt so awful about that. 17th of August, 2005, 2258. Well, when I went to visit your cousin Ned, he was so rude. He was shoving and yelling at Grandma so loud. And, well, I would never think of doing anything, but, you know, your grandma Sophia? Well, she just couldn't take the way he was treating me anymore, and she picked up a lamp and just flopped him right up the side of the head. Oh, gosh, I was so surprised. We got him to the couch, but he was plumb out of it by then. 